Okay, so I did a video recently on Chromium OS or Fido OS on the Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, this is running on a 4 gig Pi 4, and as you can see, video performance is excellent. And since the last video, this has got even better. Uh, this is playing at 1080-30 at the moment, and it is perfect. It doesn't matter if I move the mouse around or mess about with it, it still doesn't seem to drop frames. It's the best performance I've ever had on YouTube on a Raspberry Pi. If I was planning to give a Pi 4 or a Pi 400 to a relative who, say, wasn't into technology, this would be the operating system that I would think uh, I'm going to be less tech support for and they'll just get on with it and use it. Um, now, I still would say Twister OS is my favourite OS on the Pi. Uh, I absolutely love it. But let's go through some of the changes that have happened on Fide OS in this latest update. And it's thanks to Matthew for letting me know about this update nearly a month ago now, but uh, the Pi 02W happened and I had loads of videos to make and then Bullseye came out and I, I've been meaning to get back round to this. You can see I'm overclocked at 2.2 gigahertz. Uh, it's running at 56 degrees at the moment. Uh, so, and I'm not using any active cooling, this is just using the Ice Tower cooler. So in the Fido S GitHub, you can see here 27 days ago, uh, so fixed in this release. Fixed Linux apps with GUI does not display properly. This is excellent. So basically, Linux support in this, I showed it in my previous video how to get Linux up and running and how to install apps, but I could only get NeoFetch to work. Anything with the GUI wouldn't work. They do work now, and I've got some Linux apps on here now. Fixed Linux files under Files app does not display files and throws an error. Fixed annoying Bluetooth audio device stuttering issue. Uh, there's a console now, so overclocking is super easy. My last video showed how to overclock Chromium OS, which was not the easiest, and it took me ages to work it out, even though I had some instructions. This is super easy. Fixed CPU temperature does not display properly. Uh, if I call this back up, you can see the CPU display is showing there. The current usage is very, very low. It actually stays really low when it's playing YouTube, and I'll show that in a minute. Other notable items, optimized hardware accelerated VP8, VP9 video stream decoding. You should now have smoother YouTube video, supports 1080-30 playback with much lower CPU usage. And it, I think it's really noticeable. It was already great before uh, for the Pi, but uh, it's better again now. Made Nano Editor available, which is much simpler, again, down to the overclocking, uh, and you can see, and I'll show you how to get into the config.txt, but uh, it's a really, really good addition. Uh, it's an amazing update. Uh, I mean, this, as I say, is, is a great operating system for beginners, for people who aren't into technology, but also people who just don't want to mess about with things. Things are just going to work for you and be very, very reliable. Uh, I mean, a lot of us like to tinker with Linux and, and install things and play around with it. And there's always that side. And this is the great thing about the Pi. You can have pretty much any OS you want on it uh, and, uh, and old or new OSs and, and really experiment. But if you just want something to work as a web browser, but also offer some of the Linux side of it, yeah, this comes together really, really well. So let's have a look at CPU usage when it's playing a YouTube video, just to show you how low it is. So if I go into settings, I type in CPU, go to CPU usage, go to diagnostics. I can close this one down now. So you can see at the moment, what, 14%, 22%. Let's start the browser up. It's obviously going to go up as soon as you start the browser, 31%. Let's do a search for one of my videos and start that playing and call this back in. So you can see currently 78%, 93%. It went pretty high then. Uh, but once it's playing the video, there you go. So this is now playing a 1080 video. Watch how it drops on the CPU usage. See, so we're down to 20, 25% now. 32%. So really pretty low. Uh, for the Pi, uh, it's definitely handling that really nicely and the performance is great. So let's have a look at Linux and show you how well that works because that is one of the major updates. I was really pleased to see this had been added. Uh, so if I call the all apps up by going up here and then scroll down a bit, uh, you can see I've got Linux apps. Click on that and I've got various different things in here. They're quite slow to launch, I guess, because it's got to launch the Linux system as well. But if I click on Xmoto, uh, which is a bike game which I really like uh, on all sorts of platforms. Oh, actually, that started really quick. Uh, it's because I started Linux earlier on. But if I go to Levels, Challenge Cup, let's just, just pick some random. There you go, Ski ski Jump sounds interesting. And hit Play. Performance seems to be really quite decent. 
so it's nice and responsive with the keyboard. Uh, the music is absolutely fine. And you can see that it's doing what it should be doing. Oh, that was easy. Uh, and then next level, so you can see it copes really well with it. So let's see if we can navigate it. Oh, that's not gonna, oh, that was all right, that was lucky. Do I need to get some speed? Okay, so you may have heard the noise. Uh, my Foggy Pi just shut down and uh, restarted. I tried it a few other times doing exactly the same thing and it kept restarting. So I've switched over to my 8 gig Pi and I'm gonna see if that makes a difference. So this level looks quite cool, so I thought I'd give that a try. Uh, and I thought I'd leave the CPU usage and the temperature on the screen at the same time so you can see what's going on. Let's see if that was what made it. Oh, well, I'm doing a bit better anyway. Look. So what, I'm, try, I'm trying to look at the figures. Right, I'll look at the figures afterwards when I edit. But this isn't crashing now. So I think I might continue the rest of the video on, oh, cool, I didn't realize that was a, uh, oh, how do I get through that? Just got to drop down there, have I? It looks like you drop backwards. <laughs> oh, typical. <laughs> Enter to try again. Uh, so yeah, it doesn't seem to be crashing on my eight gig Pi. Whoop. Um, but uh, whether it is a RAM thing or, you know, there's the whole silicon lottery thing, I often overclock my 8 gig Pi really high. I think that Pi 4 I was using is my really old, my original Pi 4. Gosh, it's a difficult level, isn't it? How did I do it before? By accident. Uh, anyway, let's try a few more Linux things and see if we get any crashes. You can see CPU usage is quite high when it's using Linux, um, so maybe it was running out of RAM uh, at that time. Uh, let's close this down though. Good news, DHL just dropped off my Oculus Quest 2, although I do have to wait till my birthday to try it out as my wife's getting it for me. Okay, so I played around with the uh, with various different Linux things that I could install, and uh, one of the ones that I thought was interesting would be to try and st install files. Uh, so we have a files app on here. I can't remember which one I installed. Uh, I might be able to find out in Linux in a minute, um, but uh, you can see if I hit other locations, so that we have connect to server options here. We've got my network, although it doesn't seem to like my network, uh, but I've not got access to things here. Though. That's interesting. So it doesn't necessarily give you much control, but I thought it was interesting to be able to get it installed as a separate Linux app. So Audacity is an excellent audio editing app, although I'm not quite sure how I get things into it. I've just plugged a USB stick in, uh, and if I go to files, you'll see uh, that I've got some audio files on here. There's my USB drive. So that's the uh, the Chromium part of it. There you go. So uh, USB drive. So if I was to copy this one here, copy that, I wonder how I can paste it into something. So if I go back to my files, ah, Linux files is here, look. So can I just paste it in there? I don't know where that means it is, but let's try open Ah, oh, there you go. So it's in. So I've got this whole bridge from Chromium OS into uh, into Linux. So if I open that, does that import like a normal track? Let's close. Yeah. So that looks like it's going to work. So let's. Is it space to start? Yeah. This is um, royalty free music. So am I right to play it for a bit? But you can see that Audacity is working as it normally would. So. What did I used to do? Fade in. Effect fade in. There you go. So let's go back to the beginning and hit play. Yeah, brilliant. So let's quit out of that. And I'll say no. So all of that seems to be working absolutely fine. What happens if I try and play this? Open with audio player. Yeah, so we've got a little audio player there, so you can play music in the background. Does it give me a right click? Open with, look at that. So open with Audacity also comes up. So it can it can open in a Linux app, that's interesting. I also have Firefox. So I've installed Firefox in Chromium, which I thought was an interesting thing to do. Be interesting to see what the uh, CPU usage is. You can see some things do, for the first time, do seem to take a while to start up. And to rub insult to injury, let's do a Bing search. So Bing. And let's do a search for Google. It's a nice background. There you go. Give with Bing. 
Uh, and if I was to just call up something like Heart UK Deals, which I often do, just to see what's there. Half price Oculus Quest probably. But as you can see, Firefox seems to be working all right. Uh, so let's close that down and let's try something else, Linux. What else have we got? Is there anything else? Yeah, I've got GIMP on here as well. So let's ins let's start that up. Uh, so this is for images. So I could do with getting an image. Uh, oh, this, uh, would there be something on my USB stick? There might be something on my USB stick. So into the USB. You see, as an operating system, it does work well. It's not struggling with anything. Oh, there you go. So that's just a uh, one of my old screensavers. So let's copy that. Go to my files. Go to Linux files and paste it in there. So now let's see if GIMP has the same experience when we try and open it up. Recently used Lepius. Oh, there you go. Look. Bubbles open. And there's a background. And if we go into terminal and show you some of the commands I use to install a few of the things on here. Uh, so terminal, so you can see sudo apt install GIMP, sudo apt install Firefox dash ESR, sudo apt install NeoFetch, and sudo apt install Xmoto. Right, let's show you the overclock bit. So if I go back, uh, let's close down, close down Linux and close down this settings app. So on the desktop, if I now press and hold Control Alt F1, F2, and F3, instantly it goes into this. Now if you type Chronos now, you can see it comes up with a prompt, and I can do sudo edit dash pi dash config, and here it comes up. And so you can see here, I can mess around with some of the settings in the config.txt. Here are the over voltage ones which I've been using. Uh, maybe I try a different setting with my 4 gig pi, but my 8 gig pi has been completely stable with this and has been working fine. So it might be just that my 8 gig pi is better at overclocking. It has got the newer CPU uh, than the 4 gig. The 4 gig is the original one I had a couple of years ago or so now. And if I was to make a change, uh, so say for instance, I'll, I'll just put a hash in here and test. Uh, and then if I do control X, it's just like uh, on Raspberry Pi OS, so save modified buffer, so say yes and enter, and then that will make those saves. If you want to go back to the browser, you press Control Alt and F1. And quite quickly it goes back into the browser. And I was just going to try Netflix and see if that's supported, because I can't remember if it has Widevine support in this. So let's see if it lets me log in. Oh, looks like it's working so far. It's definitely playing that. Let's pick something that would be play it. Well, I do it a bit, but Brooklyn Nine Nine. Let's try this and hit play. Battery forty percent. Okay, so I'm not going to leave that playing, but obviously Widevine support is there. There's a lot to like about FidoS on the Raspberry Pi, uh, especially for people who aren't into the maker side, aren't into tinkering, just want to run an OS on a Raspberry Pi 4 or a Raspberry Pi 400. Uh, it's surprising how many things work on it and how well everything goes together. It's very straightforward, very easy. All the settings and everything are all easy to find. Uh, so yeah, I'm impressed with that. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.